ఫిక్ so this what we're proposing can be used worldwide but originally vastu shastra is an indian science of construction thank you uh, like i had mentioned earlier it's also based on the environmental criteria of the place that you're looking at so if you're looking at vastu shastra in a particular context it has to be judged based on the place and the geography and the climatic conditions of that place like she said there's a scientific basis and not just a spiritual idea and next question is um as day by as day by day in electric rate of electricity is increasing huh? so the best option for the alternative method is we are go for a, a, a solar system but in a regions of a jammu kashmir where the solar uh, sun power is not available in those uh, in those regions uh, what is the alternative method for the renewable energy renewable energy actually uh, most of the country has very good solar resource Uh, so even if you look at jammu kashmir most many areas of that if you look at the solar insulation it's not bad um, but uh, you can we can look at uh, solar you can look at uh, biomass uh, you can look at micro hydro where it is available so there in different areas there are different renewables and you can have a mix of them but uh, solar is uh, relatively abundant all over the country 1043 good afternoon sir yeah i mean uh, my heartiest congrat- congratulations to the team shunia for being selected i want to focus on the how that the water and the uh, sewage and plumbing uh, system be recycled i mean the huge amount of water is being used by per capita r- around 140 to 150 liters i mean uh, would it all go to the main sewage or drainage line to the municipality or will you recycle all that i mean uh, that's a question thank you uh so basically in case of water uh for all the water requirements that we have uh certain things um uh certain things are classified as uh black water certain, certain things are cla- classified as grey water certain sinks will, uh hand wash and um bathroom sinks will be used as uh, black water which will not be used which will only be treated and sent back uh, um for storage or into the ground but all grey water that will be generated in the house we do plan to reuse after treatment for irrigation because the rules state that grey water only has to be used for irrigation that there are methods of using it i mean there are technologies we, uh, where you can use grey water for other purposes but we uh, we're right now focusing on ir- ir- irrigation because we're supposed to focus on that and we have a uh, we have enough land to irrigate and we are also planning to have a roof garden so we'll have enough grey water to satisfy all our needs uh, and uh, uh, we also we are also planning to include rainwater harvesting and we basically since we get we'll get enough rain in uh, uh, mumbai close to mumbai we are planning to have the uh, modular house functional and even in versailles where there is enough rainwater to be able to exploit that technology 1182 Good afternoon sir uh, my question is that uh, in the high rise building uh, we know that uh, there is a high wind pressure at the top uh, so sir we uh, what how we can divert this pressure uh, uh, for the bottom for making the uh, for making it a green a green building no i'm not sure exactly what is the uh, whether we are looking at see there are two things two parts of your question one is that existing patterns of pressure and winds if we can utilize which we can utilize and there are different kinds of designs uh, there are also ducted turbines people are talking of and low wind speed uh, turbines uh, uh, the second part is whether we can channelize and actually 
design things so that you can uh, have you can modify the wind use pattern locally and that's an interesting uh, concept uh, there are some papers on it but i don't think commercially that has been sort of thought of so i'm i don't have an answer to that part of the question but yes uh, existing wind profiles you can definitely tap one more question is sir uh, is there any way to uh, use both uh, wind and solar energy together yes well, wind and solar uh, is hybridized uh, basically, what we are looking at is uh, the uh, integration is through the battery that we are talking of. So the uh, power, basically what you have is currently, uh, for instance, if you see, um, in, you have these 10 kilowatt modules with a certain portion of wind and certain portion of uh, PV. And uh, so the, the whole idea is that uh, you get different uh, different shares of electricity from wind and PV depending on the resource availability. So that that's possible to hybridize. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, my question is to Swati, ma'am. Um, to what extent adobe construction can be used in India? Adobe and uh, what uh, is it feasible in Indian atmosphere? You're talking about adobe construction. Yeah, it is feasible. Only issues, uh, major issues that we would have in our climate would be uh, the water element. So your adobe construction has to be taking care of that. So if you're looking at a particular geography, then you have to understand the climate. And we also talked about Laurie Baker's construction and rain and all those aspects. So if you can protect your walls and then go ahead with an adobe construction, then it would help. Also, the second aspect is the stabilization, which is done for earth construction. So if you go for a correct kind of a stabilization, it would help you to overcome uh, your moisture uh, entry issues. So I guess you could do that. Of course, there is a limitation on height and spans and things like that. So those aspects have to be looked into, which are uh, very building specific again. In the Indian air climatic condition, air pollution, that is dust is more. So how to protect solar panels or cells from dust suggests preventive measures. This is actually a very important question. And the impact of dust we are studying on the panels, of course, Cleaning and self-cleaning panels are what people are thinking of. So you have, if you have a uh, technology where the panel can sort of self-clean, and uh, there is some work go going on in this area. But this is an a, as an important area to uh, uh, look at, and uh, I think it's it's an area where there will be much more developments and research in future. One three double zero. In in context of uh, like energy saving ideas. We use roof farming or roof gardening. So my question is that uh, what is the feasibility of uh, using roof gardening in small cities and uh, what are the issues related to uh, roof materials in terms of like uh, concrete roof will work or any uh, some other special materials? Answer that question. It's it's uh, the issue is a very specific question related to what materials we should use for roof. Yeah, Professor Shinkre will that. Well, uh, uh, having uh, farming in urban areas is one of the uh, one of the major aspects of sustainable urban sustainability. Uh, cities have always been looked at as uh, places which consume and not uh, create food. Uh, the future is that cities should also start producing food. Uh, so terrace gardens, multiple level gardens are being considered uh, mostly for micro use, I mean, at, at, at the place where it's going to be produced. Uh, the roof could be anything. It could be a conventional concrete roof with a, a very reliable waterproofing system. <laughs> uh, the issue is, apart from waterproofing, is the load because soil uh, is a very heavy component, especially wet soil. So for what people are looking at is uh, soilless farming. So you have various kinds of soilless farming which can be done. You have uh, 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 vermiculite, which is a lighter uh, comp uh, composite component which can be used instead of soil. Uh, in Japan, in Israel, etc., they're already trying basically what uh, green elements and what plants need to grow is minerals from the soil and sunlight. So uh, there are technologies where you're trying to actually create uh, uh, compounds which already have those minerals so that the soil can be reduced, etc. So there, it's an independent area of research like Professor Banerjee said, there will be lots of 
uh, there is a lot of scope for new innovation in this area. Uh, so uh, it is uh, it's a developing field. Yeah. One zero seven six. Uh, sir, uh, my question is, uh, uh, can we uh, have some sort of changes for the existing buildings? Like, uh, what sort of labor we can offer turning an existing building into a different building? And what are those measures which we can take? Uh, I think this question was asked uh, even in the earlier session. Uh, the uh, uh, concepts are similar. The uh, scope that you have for design is much less. So you are uh, you're constrained by looking at taking the existing and then modifying. So you looked at when you talked of passive concepts, incorporating that passive concepts and retrofitting it. If you are talking of uh, renewables, we are looking at existing building, we would like to see uh, do you have the roof space available for the renewables and then you put the renewables and uh, connect it with the same system. So uh, if you are doing a green field, you have a whole host of choices. If you are doing an existing, the choices get narrowed down, but you can then work with the similar kind of concepts and try to do it. And there are studies, for instance, if you look at some of these sites where they talk of the retrofits which have been done, you can actually retrofit where uh, the uh, energy consumption goes down to only about 10% of the existing ones. So, um, uh, the, depending on the existing building, we can look, you can look at specifics but you can really go down to almost near zero for almost any existing building. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Empire State Building has also been retrofitted. So maybe you should go on to that website and have a look at that. 1047. How is the ventilation system in the building? Is it different in the green building than north of the question, as I heard it, was how is the ventilation system and is it different in green buildings as compared to other buildings? Uh, so, you know, when you talk of green buildings, you're trying to have, uh, the as you saw, there are many different passive concepts where you try to see, even without the, the present system, the way we've gone, we've modernized is we try to shut out all the natural elements and then put energy to then air condition and uh, provide the comfort condition. In the case of green buildings, you try to ensure that you have the required ventilation and the required, depending on the looking at what is available in nature, using that to the... So in that, in that extent, it is different. Um, and so, uh, and you can try and do that so that you really minimize the requirement of active energy. And then you put renewables. Yeah, triple one six. Uh, good morning, sir. My question is actually I have two questions. First of which has been partly answered already by you, uh, which is uh, if I want to utilize solar energy, uh, electrical energy in my house, then how do I change direction of the solar panel? Because uh, normally it is said that. Uh, in uh, summer, uh, in our country, the Surya is Uttarayan, that is uh, towards north, and in winter, it is towards south, that is in Dakshinayan. So, to maximize the uh, acceptance of solar energy, the panel direction should be changed. This has been partly answered by the Shunya team. Uh, by, they have said that they will change the direction of the panel uh, as the direction of the sun changes. Uh, and his question was, if the houses are at the roadside, there is a lot of smoke and uh, smoke particles and dust, then how do we care, take care of the solar panel? So you actually have told that some work is already going on in this direction. Uh, my second question is uh, to uh, the Shunya team, that if, if they are saying that their house will be a fully functional house, does it mean enabling usage of all home appliances? If yes, then what is the wattage of those home appliances which we can use? Uh, yeah, so uh, regarding the question that was uh, directed towards us, uh, yeah, we have, uh, when we say that the house is fully functional, it is genuinely fully functional. So uh, it will have AC, washing machine, television, laptop, lights, dishwasher, clothes dryer, these things. They are made mandatory by the competition, so all of those appliances will be there. Uh, regarding the 
wattage. So this is how I'll answer it. We have a five kilowatt peak system and given the climatic conditions, it produces around 20 kilowatt hour uh, per day on average uh, for the month of June, July. So uh, the uh, uh, if you take it sum total of all of the appliances, their ratings, and if you multiply that with the typical usage, so that comes out around to around 14, 15 kilowatt hour per day. So we have a net zero energy house, so a net energy positive house. So in that sense, all of these appliances can be utilized, but uh, for the competition, we'll not be using all of them all of the time. So we'll be using them selectively. However, the house that we have designed has the capability to support all of these appliances through a combination of solar PV panels and the grid. Just like to add that, you know, the team has actually uh, taken for each appliance. See, we have in this case requirement for the competition. So you have a television, you have a dishwasher, uh, and you have a washing machine, and there are cycles for that. So for each appliance, we have taken the best the efficient rating and the peak rating and an usage pattern, and then built up the load profile for the house, and then done that calculation uh, for Mumbai and Versailles condition, and that shows us that we are going to be able to be about five units uh, positive, five kilowatt hour will be actually supplying to the grid. One of the uh, basis by which we will be judged is how much electricity we will actually be able to generate during the one week that our house is connected to the Versailles grid. Uh, so this is how, so we are actually, uh, the challenge is for us is that we are doing the simulation, but we actually have to build it and we have to see the results in the, in the field. Uh, we were asked what is the concept behind the handicap bathroom. Actually the handicap bathroom is a requirement. Uh, the competition states that we need a handicapped bathroom in the house, so it's, it, I mean, it, it really doesn't have much of a concept. It's more of a requirement. Thank you. There was a question on will ozone depletion cause any harm to green buildings? And ozone depletion um, is a global problem. It's not at a, at a local uh, issue. Uh, of course, ozone depletion, if overall it can cause harm to the, uh, uh, the globe, but that problem with the Montreal Protocol has more or less been tackled. So that's one of the global problems which seems to have been, we, we've seen, hopefully seen the end of it. Why is the concept of thermal mass not being given, not given preference to decrease the usage of HVAC systems? Well, things are changing, you know. Um, people are, we are looking at uh, using these uh, passive concepts and uh, reducing this. So this mix, there's a dynamics and uh, we have to, as, as things change, uh, it's going to come in more. So active HVAC systems will reduce. 1032. Uh, my, uh, my question is to Professor Ranjan, sir. Uh, in solar panel, the efficiency of a battery led ion battery is just only two years. So it will affect the whole cost of the solar panel. I mean, it will affect the uh, overall cost of the solar panel in during its life. So how to overcome this? Uh, we don't have such technology of a battery. Uh, even the lead-ion battery, we don't have such uh, to store the battery more than five years. It just efficiency is five years. So how to overcome this thing? Um, that's an important question, and uh, I wish I had the answer to it. Uh, the uh, lead acid batteries are still, uh, you know, on a life cycle basis. They are probably still the most cost-effective uh, storage option. Uh, two things one can do. One is one can think in terms of uh, demand side management and load control, reduce the need for storage. Uh, and uh, we are looking at uh, now nickel cadmium, uh, lithium ion, and new battery technologies and concepts coming in. Um, and uh, hopefully cost will come down. But uh, this is the trickiest part. Of course, if you're doing this, we can use the grid as a means of storage. So many of these systems that we are talking of PV are grid interactive systems. Um, but uh, the issue of battery life and uh, battery cost is an important issue. And uh, I think in the future, we are going to see a lot of uh, technology developments in this area. There's a question, can we be a part of this project? Uh, the uh, answer that we have is that uh, the primary responsibility of the project is with this team. However, we uh, welcome people to uh, be part 
uh, giving us ideas or be a part of some of these things uh, and we will have to work out the modalities how that can be done. Um, huh? Yeah, so generating awareness is one, definitely one of the things that you can do. Uh, once we have the house construction and the house uh, being built, then also I think the, the, that is when people can come in. Uh, if you have some specific idea which you think can be integrated, we can, uh, if that idea makes sense from our building, we can use it and give the credit for that particular idea and uh, integrate that. Um, but overall, right now we are well into the building and it will be difficult for us to integrate new people fully into the project. So. Yeah, uh, another thing that we've been thinking of doing is having college coordinators from different colleges to uh, essentially do the same thing that we're doing for IIT and AOA. So that is, we still need to figure out a few details before we can actually uh, make a commitment of that sort. But uh, till that happens, yes, you can be a part of the project in the sense that you do whatever you feel that you've learned from this in your own college, on your own behalf. And if you want to let us know, then we'll be very happy to receive any sort of feedback. Uh, this project is not just about the house that we're building. That's what is the message that we want to convey. It's a lot bigger. It's about tackling the energy problem and the demand, housing demand problem in India. And yes, you can contribute to that in whatever way you see fit. Sagar Institute, if you have a question, please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Well, sir, as we are talking in the context of uh, saving energy, can we also use the wireless transmission of electricity implemented in a household as being uh, used practically by the students of MIT as electricity? Yes, sure, we can. If it's, um, it depends on how that technology plays out. And you could have, uh, if it is cost effective and one, one can look at how this distribution system compares. Uh, in a building, typically, uh, the local distribution losses don't account for much. Uh, so, while uh, we could do that and there will be situations where wireless transmission may be possible, the, the issue will be how that technology looks in terms of uh, uh, the capital and the operating costs. But uh, the simple answer to your question is yes, it can. The question is what all vernacular techniques have been uh, built today, something of that kind. So I went through the lecture, uh, my lecture went through some examples and you've seen several examples where a lot of these have been implemented. I do not know if the architects intended it that way, but uh, that's my perspective towards it. And there are lots of buildings which, you, if you look around, you'll find a lot of buildings which do implement these techniques, vernacular as well as contemporary. And there's a question which says, is it possible to build a completely net zero energy house? Well, there are many examples of uh, net zero houses which are there with details. Uh, you can, we can, uh, so, so yes, it is possible. 1192. Hello, sir. Sir, my question is, what is carbon footprint? Okay, that's a simple question to answer. Carbon footprint is uh, essentially, if you look at any activity or uh, any individual, you can see, suppose I want to calculate what is my carbon footprint. I will see, let's say I'll take whatever I have done in the last year, how many times I've traveled by uh, aircraft, take the kilometers, see how much uh, energy is used in the aircraft, and look at the carbon content of that fuel, and then calculate, then add it all up, and I get total amount of tons of CO2 that I, uh, that I, that is ascribed to my activity uh, per year. And then I can compare it with a global average and an Indian average. So it's basically the total amount of CO2 that is emitted as a result of your activity. And typically, this will be done over an annual period. 1071. My question is, supposing every building in the country installs uh, solar photovoltaics, uh, which has fluctuating inputs and uh, follows the grid buyback policy, uh, I presume it may cause uh, grid instability which is a serious matter. Um, you know, the, we have to see how to uh, address this issue. And there are, again, there are several studies where people are looking at uh, grid penetration. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are possibilities in terms of the stability issue which you are talking of. There is also an issue in terms of how do you balance the supply and demand. For instance, in Tamil Nadu, this kind of effect has been seen for wind. 
uh, where you have a large amount of wind penetration and uh, the wind has fluctuated, so then the rest of the grid has to be planned for. So when you talk in terms of uh, large, the whole concept would change because then you would have, uh, you would have to have different buildings and each building has, uh, each building has a certain amount of generation. You would also have to have quick, other quick backup power which would come in when the solar is not there. Um, so, this is something that we can use by looking at simulation and, and see the effect. Um, but there are studies being done on uh, local grid stability issues, on this balancing issues, but this is an, it is a problem and it is something that one has to think of and plan for. 1164. Uh, I want to ask a simple question. We have been talking about uh, green building right since morning, but uh, in our uh, country, in big cities, we are building such large buildings covered with glass all over. If you see the mall buildings and all, is it not an antithesis of the concept of green building? Yes, uh, we, uh, as I said, you know, there is always a dynamics between the, uh, the, the whole idea is that uh, we look at different concepts of buildings and there are, uh, you know, there is uh, nothing that mandates that buildings have to be of a particular type today. Um, so you have a whole spectrum of buildings and a, sp a whole spectrum of energy use and uh, it is important that we try and integrate uh, the concept of green buildings uh, into our thinking, uh, both in terms of architecture and engineering and that is the whole motivation of this uh, project that we are trying to do uh, to bring in these concepts more into the mainstream. Uh, I'd like to add to that, uh, it's not like a glass facades are bad, glass buildings are bad. Glass has its use and its application that can be used positively. And particular today, particularly today with the invention of smart glass and double and triple glazing systems, we have proven examples of buildings which have gone up and uh, done a good job in terms of green architecture. There's integration of ventilation systems, cutting out of light, sorry, cutting out of heat while bringing in light. All these examples you can see in the glass that is available today and the way the whole thing is engineered. So it's not like glass is bad. It's just that it's a situation specific thing and you need to make sure that it works that way. Green building point of view, what is the contribution positive or negative of covering the building with glass all over? Obviously, you can't use glass all over. I think we can just say that. We can't use glass all over. You can't have a glass box. We've, I mean, everyone has been talking about orientation and, you know, the context and all these things. So, obviously, you can't use glass all over. Also, what sort of glass is it? So, glass can't be used all over. Yeah. One last question, 1003. I have a question there. Can you explain me about the earthquake resistance in green buildings? And is there any possible to resist, uh, resist the disasters? I think, you know, these things are, uh, is she answering something? Uh, the issue of designing a building with conventional uh, technology and the issue of designing buildings, green buildings, uh, I can have uh, green buildings which are designed to be equally earthquake resistant as conventional buildings, I can have both which have not equally. So it's uh, it's not it's not necessarily saying that green buildings is any better or worse vis-a-vis uh, -vis earthquake resistance. So you will have to, if you're depending on the zone in which you are, you are choosing the materials. You can look at an analysis for earthquake resistance. We have not talked anything about it in our workshop today, and uh, so it's not. Prima facie that a particular green building will be uh, better or worse is not something which I can, we can make an explicit comment and it's very context specific and yeah. Okay. Um, so we are, uh, we are going to show you a small uh, five minute video so uh, about the uh, our solar decathlon. Uh, before we uh, do that, just like to thank all of you uh, for sparing time on a sa Saturday morning um, for being with us and th this whole you know green buildings really have the potential to transform both the energy sector and the housing sector for India and uh, this is not going to happen automatically this will need 
technology, this will need development, this will need design. So we would really welcome your engagement with us, uh, whether it is in the form of ideas, whether it is in the form of even follow-up courses. If people are interested, we can have this was more an awareness kind of course. And uh, we've been delighted with the response so far. Um, so we look forward to interacting with you in the future. So please look at the video and thank you for your patience. The Solar Decathlon is an international competition in which universities from all over the world meet to design, build and operate an attractive net zero energy house using solar energy as the only energy source. IIT Bombay and Rachna Sansad's Academy of Architecture joined hands to form Team Shunya. We are proud to be the first Indian team to ever participate in Solar Decathlon Europe 2014 in Versailles. India, home to 1.2 billion people, is a culturally and geographically diverse nation. The past two decades have witnessed rapid, unprecedented development in industry, technology and infrastructure. The number of urban middle-class houses today stands at 32 million. It is projected to be 147 million by 2030, a nearly 300% increase. Such a rapid increase in the housing sector will lead to a lot of pressure on the energy infrastructure. So, it is essential that India find a sustainable, cost-effective and energy-efficient house for the Indian middle class. Team Shunya is trying to create a sustainable and affordable way to meet the growing energy and housing demand. Through a successful demonstration of our concept, we aim to change the perception of the building industry, policy makers and the general population towards sustainable housing. Our house is named H0, a 70 square meter house designed to accommodate up to six people. It is a quintessential Indian home optimized for a typical urban Indian family unit of a couple, two children and the grandparents. H0 has a bedroom, two bathrooms including a handicap friendly one, a kitchen and a wide spacious living room. The house is a steel framed structure with walls made from prefabricated insulated panels. The panels interlock easily, providing ease of construction and thermal comfort. The spatial arrangement of the different rooms was arrived at by combining modern techniques of simulation with the age-old principles of Vastu Shastra, the ancient Indian science of architecture. Multifunctional spaces and modular furniture provide a compact yet comfortable living space. We have used the Indian concept of a veranda which acts as a buffer space and minimizes heat gain. The jali, another traditional Indian element, induces ventilation while providing protection from radiation. Passive solar architecture and natural lighting design ensure that the windows, walls and spaces reduce the artificial cooling requirements. The roof has a 5 kW peak photovoltaic system to meet all the electricity requirements of the house. A novel PV thermal system provides hot water for bathing, washing dishes, etc. Being a net energy positive house, it supplies more electricity to the grid than it consumes. H0 will be a part of a four-story building cluster, ensuring a high standard of life and a vibrant culture. With the rapid development of India, the major cities are getting saturated and the peri-urban areas are emerging as the new growth centres. The proposed Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor, which connects two of the country's biggest nodes by road and rail, will see a substantial growth in industries and, as a result, jobs. Lying along the DMIC, very close to Mumbai, is Uran, making it an ideal site to show the application of our concept. Projects such as the DMIC, coupled with our housing model, will make India an inspiration for all developing countries to grow in a sustainable manner. Team Shunya, building a sustainable future.